What's up guys, James here again with another video. And in this video, we're going to be talking app.js, which is what handles everything in Next.js. So I get many questions about what this does, what it can be used for, and how you can do extra things with it instead of just the standard set of components here. So to give you an idea of what this is and what these two props are the component property here is actually the page that is being uh, activated or is active at the time right so when you click on it uh, and you load your home page that could be this index.js file and then the page props is an object of the initial props that you can send down to a page and then obviously that's what's returned well What's great about this is that you can override it, right? So if you want to keep state when navigating pages, you can handle that in here. If you want to persist the layout between pages, you can also do this. Um, you can do global CSS, which you can kind of sort of see here. They implement that and you could use that on every single page. You can inject additional data into your pages. So if you're using server props or static props, that will actually get passed around the page. And finally, you can actually use custom error handling by using the component to catch method. So the app.js file is, is pretty big and has a lot of things that you can do with it. Now to override it, you just add more functionality here. And once you've added that functionality, you can do all sorts of things. So what I'm going to show you now is what my app.js looks like on my website. And I can talk through each piece of this in detail to give you an idea of the things that I'm overriding and what I'm doing with it. So here we are in my app.js file for my website. And here is everything I'm doing, which probably looks pretty intimidating right now, but we're going to describe exactly what we're doing here and how powerful this app.js file is. So at the top, I have the Chakra UI, which I use for my website and I use pretty much everywhere. Then I have the static kit, which handles sending um, my newsletter plus also my uh, contact page. So if someone submits that they want they, my newsletter or if they want my contact details for some reason and they need to reach out to me, they can use the static kit provider here. I'm also using SEO, which is a part of the um, Next.js stuff, as well as my theme, which is customizable, global CSS, which you saw previously, and then head, which handles the uh, head section of an HTML file, which comes from Next. And this is just the default SEO that Next SEO handles on top of my customization part here. Now we've kind of discussed that. Now we can kind of look at a few things that I'm doing here. So before we even get into the actual component and passing things back and forth, right here, I'm creating this global style. And inside of this global style, I'm doing a few things. I'm resetting the CSS so that it doesn't have any weirdness when people are viewing my content. And then just a couple of styles here, such as color mode, if they want light or dark, as well as what I expect the min width to be and the scroll behavior. And then inside the next app, I'm using flex with columns. And obviously they can use the background color mode of light or dark, depending on how you're viewing my page. And I'm passing in the children, which are all of the pages. So now we're actually into the my app part of the default functionality here. And what I'm doing is, as you can see all the way down here, that is the component and page props that you saw previously in the basic version, which you can see here. We're just returning that. So what I'm doing with mine is I'm actually wrapping it in a bunch of different elements. So right here, I'm wrapping it in my theme. 
I'm then telling it the default color mode that I expect when someone loads my page up, which of course is just light mode for now. I'm then wrapping it in that global style, which you can see right here. We're wrapping it in this to make sure all of these styles are applied to every single page. So I talked about that previously. So I did have the option, I could have just put this all in this global CSS file, but I wanted to show how to use a style component. So here we go. Then I'm using wrapping it in the static provider, which means that basically any page could handle the sending of emails or uh, anything to do with form submission in some nature, any page can handle that. Of course, SEO is super important. So I have that on every page and then I override that in other pages. And then finally, I have the head component here, which just handles some open source analytics, which I actually don't use anymore, but it still shows up. And then finally, after we've done all of these things, we then send the components and the properties. So to give you a bit more context, let's just look at a page, for example, index.js. Now you can see by default, uh, we're returning some stuff. And one of the things that we're overriding here is this SEO. And what I'm passing into this SEO in this index page, here you can see, I'm actually passing in pieces of information. So when this gets rendered, app.js knows that this is gonna be overridden and this is what's gonna be provided as SEO. Now, another thing that this will do is if you're actually using some functionality from Next.js, such as get static props, which I use for my blog, that will get passed in. So when it renders, it knows exactly what it needs to do. So if you look at my, uh, to my blog here, you can see down here, I'm using get static props. So that functionality will get passed in and be part of this page props here. So that when the page is rendered and this is using SSG statically generated, it will know where each part of this is. And I also use it in here in my slug, which is my actual posts. And you can see a couple of different ones here. We have get static paths as well as get static props. Now the get static paths means that if I click on another page, for example, I go from one blog page to another, it knows exactly where to go. And Next.js will be able to use that because it's passing this information back to it. So it's super powerful and app.js can be overridden in many ways. And I just wanted to do this short video to explain how I'm using it and how you guys can use it to create great content using Next.js. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit subscribe, hit like, tell your friends. And if you have any more app.js questions or Next.js questions in general, check out my Discord below. Uh, it's full of people who are currently taking my course as well as just general developers. As well as that, leave a comment if you have extra questions and I'll make sure to get back to you. Until next time, see ya.